You know, earlier today, folks, I did a video this morning. I normally do a 40-minute video once a month. I skipped last month. I did one this morning. The video never went up. And once again, it's because of the content of the video. When you tell people the truth about the situation, and there's any truth to it, you know, people that watch these videos, they monitor it. So who wants, you know, a scruffy guy like me hopping up here telling the truth to anybody? You know, I'm not supposed to be capable of telling the truth based on, you know, the color of my skin. I'm supposed to be lying and telling everybody to fucking hate each other. So um, I don't do that. That's not my thing. I don't lie to people, and I have no reason to tell everybody to hate each other. So me doing the things I do, and I do what I do, so I'm going to try to do something similar. Those of you who watched the Super Bowl yesterday know that, you know, the last play of the game, you know, for the Seahawks was the last play of the season. Everybody knows that Marshawn Lynch should have got the ball. And if you're a true sports fan, you will know Tom Brady had a good game. Julian Edelman had an awesome game. Um, Gronk had some pretty good catches. But personally, I personally think the person that won that game should have been the MVP, and he wasn't. You know, the guy gets the interception. If he would have slapped the ball down, if he would have just knocked the ball down, the next play would have been Marshawn Lynch, seven points. I'm sorry, six points. Then the extra kick would have made it game over. Tom Brady would have had like ten seconds left. Bomb, maybe gets him in the field goal range, the overtime. I don't know. But I know without that interception, with 20 seconds left in the game, the Patriots are not looking at a Super Bowl championship. I also know, after watching the game, knowing what I know about football, and seeing the way the game transpired, there's no way in life that guy who got that interception at the end of the game wouldn't have been made MVP. Um, you look at the whole way the game went down. You look at everything, every aspect of the game, and it was a good football game. Now, when I go to the conspiracy theory part of the video that I did earlier today, me and my buddies were talking. Now, every year around this time, you have the Super Bowl which is supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, precursor to who's going to control the country. Who would be the left or the right? So you figure, you know, uh, uh, the Grand Ole Owl, you know, the people who live up here in, uh, Jesus, I almost said Cassini, you know, uh, who uh, do their uh, world uh, thing every year up in Sonoma County here where they, they, they see who's going to run the world or whatever. I forget what the place. I ain't working for damn owls. Okay. You got the owl people and you have the good old boys. Yeah, that's right. These two different groups. Then you have the New World Order people. Now, you look at these groups and, you know, you look at the Super Bowl where the lights went out. The Niners versus the... Oh, God. The Ravens. So, how is the world going to go? And I told my friend, well, if the Patriots win, because we're at war. Remember the first time when the Patriots came into power? We're doing war time. And what better way to boost Americans up to make the Patriots the champions? So, the moral of the story is this. So, we're watching the game, and I'm like, well, looks like we're going to have another two years of, you know, What's been going on? The uh, what you want to call it? The New World Order. Um, uh, what's the transition that we've been going through? So you figure, you know, if the Seahawks win, it'll be the New World Order thing for another two years, and you know, maybe they'll stick somebody else in the office and whatnot, and then we'll we'll see what's going on after that. But at the end of the game. Weird happenstance, the Patriots won. Well, looking at the world situation, Obama just asked 
for uh, permission to go to war against ISIL or ISIS or whoever the hell they are. And whatever Obama asked for is pretty much no till this point. Now the Patriots have won. I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of days Congress gives Obama the authorization, uh, authorization to go to war. Period. Because of the conspiracy. That's how it works. You get the conspiracy theory people, you get the, the true sports people, you get the Alex Jones types, and everybody has their conclusion to what's going to happen and what's going to be. So, my suggestion to you is that we will be going to war soon, probably within the next, say, shoot, probably within the next two to three weeks. You know, if Obama gets the permission now, go to war. Patriots, war, whatever. That was just one aspect. So then I spoke about the holy war. The war against ISIL. ISIS. ISIS. I don't know. Now why is this? Now, if you think back people, think about the Crusades. How many people did the Christians kill? Think about it. Did the Christians kill anybody? Think about the Crusades. What were one of the things? You join Christianity or you die. Right? Can somebody please explain this to me? How, you know, the United States of America has to be beholden to other nations. We have to pledge our allegiance to other nations. First of all, here's where I got mad in the last video that I did before, you know, the video didn't upload. I get pissed off that if you're the leader of the United States of America, you have to have an allegiance with Israel. Then you look at the history of Israel. Now, first of all, um, here in America, when I was growing up, you'd hear white people say, go back to Africa. Get the fuck out of here. This isn't your country. Well, it's not your country either. Let me get back to Benjamin Netanyahu. So, over there in Israel, Africa, let's just keep it real. Over there in Africa, or Israel, Ivory Coast, whatever you want to call it. Over there on that continent, these people were placed there. Because apparently, the Germans didn't want them in Germany. So in the 40s or whatever, I forget what year it was, the world decided to take all the Jewish people who were being prosecuted and put them in the Middle East. Take them back to their original home. Allegedly. It's the allegedly stayed from there. We all know the black Jews are the ones that were persecuted and kicked up out of there. The black Jews were the ones who should have been brought back there. But the black Jews are scattered through all four corners of the world. Because if they ever return to their true homeland, God will come down here and punish those blah, 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 blah. That's another story. I've seen videos about Israel and how Israel treats black people. Now, when people talk about President Barack Obama's relationship with Israel, all I can think of is those videos where I see Benjamin Netanyahu talk about black people as if they're infiltrators trying to take over his country. And as a black person in the United States of America, thinking about all the American troops, white, black, Mexican, Asian, or whatever, that go fight over there for the interests of Israel, that's, a, that's fucked up. Because here in America, we fight for each and every American. 
each and every black, each and every white, each and every Chinese, Mexican, Italian, uh, Italian, Irish, yeah, all of them. We fight for everybody that's here. Now, why in the hell should any American soldier go fight for Israel if Israel will not include all the people? In other words, in Benjamin Netanyahu's words, if we let so many infiltrators in here, it would no longer be a Jewish state. So, why do you need a Jewish state? Is there a Christian state? Is there a... Uh, is there a state for those people who don't believe in God? Is there, a, I mean, I mean, if you can have a Jewish state, how come you can't have a Muslim state? How come you can't have an Islamic state? You see, we, the people, we don't have an American state, do we? Do we have a, an African-American state? Do we have an Anglo-American state? Do we have a white state? Do we have a state for certain races of people? Do we have uh, certain religious states here in America? But for these people to demand so much of America and they're non-inclusive in their own country, we shouldn't do shit for them because they don't do shit for us. Whatever deal that people had in the past, whatever faulty uh, agreement that was made, it has nothing to do with mainstream America. It has nothing to do with hardworking Americans of any color. But hardworking Americans of every color go die for the needs of Israel. It makes no sense to me. If I am the president and the leader of the United States of America, no country comes first before America. No people come first before the American people. No company come first before the American will. No agencies are above the American people. But yet and still we watch the news where people are like, Obama doesn't like Netanyahu. He's anti-Semitic. Then a guy tells me the other day, Obama's a Muslim. What do you think about that? I'm like, it doesn't matter what religion the president is of the United States of America. It does not matter unless this man has his heart someplace else. If you are the president of the United States of America, regardless of what color you are, you are my president. I did not like George Bush. George Bush was my president. Bill Clinton was my president. Ronald Reagan was my president. Ford and Carter also my president. I have no problem with any of them. When Obama was voted in president, I didn't like Obama either. I still don't like Barack Hussein Obama, even though I don't know why people will have to say his middle name to make him seem more Arabic. Maybe they should have got a dark-skinned brother. They couldn't have even said he was, well, he was too black to be Muslim. I don't know, and I really don't care. But when you hear people, so-called Americans, normally they're mostly old Americans. Obama doesn't care for Israel. Well, why in the fuck would he? Why should he care for Israel? Why should one American soldier of any race or color or nationality die for Israel? Do Israel, does Israel, will Israel come fight Canada for America? Will Israel come stop Mexicans from infiltrating American society and taking jobs from the white man? Is Israel going to fix any of our problems? No. And as the President of the United States of America, you know what I would do? I would do like they used to do in the olden days. You wait until the dust settles and you make friends with who won the last fight. You don't get in other people's business. 
That's why, you know, we're all fucked up. That's why people don't trust us. That's why people don't like us. That's because we can tell you how better to live your life as we sit back and show you how shitty ours can be. If you watch Jerry Springer, if you watch Steve Wilco, if you watch uh, the guy with the black eyeballs that look like a crazy cartoon character, uh, if you watch any of these shows that show the worst parts of America, the seedy underbelly of the crap that we are, you see, we are the best of the best, better than the rest. Everyone looks for your weakness. Everyone looks for a way to say, I'm not afraid of them anymore. You know, you got people who built their whole entire society around destroying you. They put images on all this stuff. You know, hey. It's supposed to be eyeballs or something like that. Destroy you, the eyeballs will, will take your soul and shit. What do you want to believe? What can you believe? I can say some things right now that piss people off. You people, black people, they sold their own people as slaves. Get the full story, my friend. Get the whole story. He didn't want to free nobody. He didn't want to free anybody. He even said he didn't want to free nobody. If I can save the republic without freeing one slave, he said that. He said it. I mean, he said it. He said it. He's not free. You know, when they freed the slaves, they enslaved the poor people. In other words, none of us are free. None of us was ever free. None of us was ever going to be free. None of the people who walk this land over here in this country, we're not free. The lights, the hats, shirts, the water, everything in America costs you. Every single thing. You buy a house. You own the house. You have to pay taxes on that. That's a property tax. Because you can afford property, you're going to be taxed on it. It's not free. Then you hear some of these people like Mike Huckabee. We worked hard to save money for our kids to go to school. And Obama wants to give education for free. Well, education should have been free a long time ago. Did you know at one point, he had to pass a test to be able to even go to school. So where's the logic in not passing the test and not being taught to pass the test? So when rich people don't want your children educated, it's because they don't want to educate their own kids. My kid is dumb. My kid is stupid. We have millions of dollars. I don't fuck with my kid have to go learn anything. I'm just going to open up a company and put him in charge of a bunch of poor people. All he has to know how to do is manage his desk. But your kid, who goes and gets that education, who climbs up the ladder in that job, she gets shit on because she's a girl. She gets less pay because she's a female. She might even get less pay if she's a good-looking female. They just want her to sit in the office so guys can make sexual remarks about her behind her back and make sexual innuendo that she can't deceive or say anything about because she needs a job. This world is twisted. The haves and the have-nots don't even live in the same town anymore. You know, um, it's sad, but we have to wake up. You can't go on life through life hating people or disliking people because of a 
the image that you've been taught. You see, when I experienced racism at work, I let it consume me because I didn't think that anybody thought like that. And then once I studied it a little bit, I found out these people aren't racist at all. They have just been raised and programmed and taught to dislike me for some nefarious reason that was totally nonsensical to me once I figured it out. There are several different strands, strains, and, 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 and different roads that go into the same old bull. People don't like us for biblical reasons. Now, how can you hold a grudge for 40,000 years? Ridiculous. Then, I've been studying science lately. Because, of, you know, you, you, you go through the Bible. You study the Bible. You study the, the links to racism in the Bible. You study everything. And then you lead you to science. I mean, you can't put the Bible and science in the same context, but if you study racism, then you'll find a link to racism in the Bible, right? Then you'll go back to this, the Edomites. I tell you, people, the hypocrisy, the the bullshit, I mean, the reasoning, the Illuminati, the, the Vanderberg group or whatever they call them, uh, the guys that worship the owl, I keep on forgetting it. They do it right at the street from my house. All these countercultures and beliefs and belief systems and military complex systems and the uh, the racist system and the, and the racism system. You know, the average white person can't be a racist because they can't control anybody's life. Nobody knew that. Archie Bunker was a bigot. You know, Donald Sterling could control other people's lives. He could, he could make or break somebody. And that gets to the next part of what I said in that 40 minute video. The United States of America only thinks about free speech when it affects one of their constituents. Sony Pictures. They fought for Sony Pictures to release a movie about killing the leader of another country, a sitting living leader, without changing his name, without changing his appearance, without making him look different, without without anything. They just put a movie out saying that, you know what, CIA wants this man dead. But, you got an aging man telling his girlfriend, don't hang around a group of people. Don't hang out with these guys. Don't be hanging out with all these black dudes. That outraged people, shut him down. They gave him $2 billion to shut him up. He began to call his constituents around him hypocrites. He began to call the league hypocritical. They got rid of him. North Korea complains. Don't put the movie out there. Come on, man. How you dis disrespectful? Don't do it. Don't do it. Show us some respect. Don't put the movie out. Why? It's freedom of speech. They should have the right to put any movie out they want to. But don't the old white man have the right to tell his half-black girlfriend not to hang around any black guys? Don't hang around no black guys. Don't bring your niggas to my game. I'm not paying for you to go get fucked by a jungle bunny. Whatever racial statement he made. He grew up in a different era of time. 
You can't fault him for what he was taught. See, he was taught you are superior than these people. They're only good for having sex with and dumping around for your entertainment. And when he mentioned to his girlfriend, don't hang with these guys. That makes me look bad. His freedom of speech was violated. His freedom of speech, when you go out and tell your kid, don't hang around with those people at the end of the corner because they sell drugs. Your kid can technically go back and call the police on you. My mom told me not to hang around with these Mexicans and blacks down the street. What is your mom? White. Then what would happen? You can't have a conversation in your house because you may offend someone. But a billion dollar corporation can offend somebody and the government stands up for them. The government stands up for Sony free speech. I have had at least 20 videos snatched off of YouTube that were not angry, but they offended somebody because I told the truth. Because I said something about somebody so vile that it, <laughs> he's talking about me. I'm going to flag this video. I remember the passion of, uh, the, what was the passion of, um, what's the name of that movie? The one that was on YouTube and, it, and all the, the, the Arab world was mad and the Benghazi thing and all that crap. And there we go. They let that go. They didn't cut that video off. Oh, several times. They blocked it several times. No. These beheadings. They put that shit on the internet. Yes, they do. But what upsets me the most is how our country fucking wise, that's beautiful. I love my country, but I love my people more. I love all my people. White, Mexican, Asian, all of them. I love all my people. Because see, if you give the next guy next door to you respect, he's going to give you respect. If they see somebody climbing to your window and you're a dick, I'm not dialing 911 because that guy's an asshole. I'm not, ooh, they're, they're robbing his house. Good, maybe he'll move. But if you're respectful to your neighbor, if you run over there when they need help, they'll run over here when, when I need help. They will run to you when you need help if you go to them when they need help, regardless of what color they are. I live in a neighborhood, Hispanic, white, white and Hispanic, Hispanic. And there's black families on all the way, all the way to the edge of the corner, all the way on the Way, way, way over there on the corner. And there's black families at the end of the block. And then from there, where's the nearest black family? The nearest black family is probably about three, four, five blocks from there. See, black people in this town are like salt and pepper. You see, when you mix salt and pepper together, you can look at it and see where the black is, see where the white is. See, people here are mixed in the same neighborhood. There's a lot of Hispanics on this side of town. You know, a lot of police action around here. It's because they come around here. There's a place called Fountain Grove, not too far from here, where the riches of the rich live in this town. You go to Fountain Grove, you don't even see a police car. You know police cars in Fountain Grove. You go down the hill from Fountain Grove, jail, police station. But up in Fountain Grove, you won't see one police car. Fountain Grove. Them little kids do more dope than anybody else in fucking town. They don't get pulled over. You come on down to Roseland, Cotting Town. You get pulled over. And why is that? Because, see, the rich people who can pay the bills, they'll go to court and pay the bill at one time. Pay the bill at one time, the money goes into the system, shit right out the next couple of days. You got poor people, well, they're going to make payments. When that payment comes trickling in, it's that trickle in payment. That old Mexican guy, he got too many people at home. He's going to pay this fine. So he keeps his job. I went to court. <laughs> I'm just sitting in court. I don't know why I'm doing it. 
Hispanic male, old Mexican guy. He stands up and they says, Sir, are you aware this is your ninth DUI? This is ridiculous. You have nine DUIs. The prosecutor stood up and said, He pays his fine. They put him on another payment plan. Nine DUIs. They put him on a I know a white guy. They tried to give him 36 months. They tried to throw his ass away. Because he's like, I got a job, but um, I'm laid off right. You laid off right now? <laughs> you laid off right now? He said, well, I don't, I'm the union. They, they can call me anytime. He hurry up and straighten his shit up. I hate when my hat's crooked. Like, like I want to be centered. But I got to be centered. Hey, man. I got to be centered. But you look at it, man. These people out there. The priorities on this world are twisted. Now, I was checking out something a few minutes ago when they were talking about aliens. So I'm getting back into the aliens because aliens with aliens and shit, you might meet some cool people fucking with aliens. But these regular people you deal with, when people want to talk about race and shit, but they don't understand why they don't like people. They are well, I just can't understand why you people do that. Well, we don't understand why you people do a whole bunch of things. But we're not going to try to kill you for it. We don't, we didn't set up laws to hold you down or hold you back. You see, the difference between me and a lot of other people is they're one dimensional. And I mean, I can't be one dimensional. I'm not speaking just for people of color. I'm speaking for people who don't have shit. And people don't understand that. You see a poor white person, and you say to the poor white person, you know, uh, you know, this or that, the fuck, you can't help me. You don't got shit. You have nothing. You're black. You guys got nothing. I did some studies just recently, and I have a lot of white friends, and I start breaking them off from the hard shit. Dude, I have a friend, I'm out, uh, I'm sure you've seen him on a few videos, the white guy, and I always talk about him. He comes to see me every four or five years and shit, and got to talk. And this year he came down here, I hadn't seen him in a while. Matter of fact, I've seen him every other year. And um, he came down here, and I started pointing out shit. I started talking about the Edomites and racism. He said, you've never talked to me like this before. And I told him, you never got on my fucking nerves before. Now, I love all my friends and all my people. Motherfucker got so deep into my nerves I had to break his ass off a fucking lesson that he will never forget. And when he got home, he still hasn't called me. He hasn't called me. He sat here and for a week, a whole week straight, he was here every day for a week. When he gets home, he doesn't call me. Because I said something to him. I pointed some things out to him and then I played a video. Because he got my name, he got on my nerves to the point to where I'm like, why you gonna talk to me like I'm stupid? You know, I know, I'm not, man, you're my buddy. I'm like, I know I'm your buddy. You come to me for advice, but now you're, you're talking to me like I'm fucking stupid. Let me teach you something. And I put on a video called Hidden Colors. They got three volumes of this. Hidden Colors 1, Hidden Colors 2. It talks about the history of black people. What black people did before they came to America. What black people did when they were in Africa. What black people did to black people while they were in Africa. Hidden colors. I will put a link on there, but whenever I put links on shit, it don't give me no love. So I won't put a link up here. So, after watching Hidden Colors for a few minutes, he was like, oh my God, I can't believe that. That's not true. How can black people have created mathematics? The Indians created mathematics because India is number one in mathematics right now. And then I went on to show him other things within the same video because he couldn't handle it just watching it. So I started fucking with him. I started fast forwarding to certain spots in the video. Key points of history that were not given to black people. Black people, will, 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 they will reject this history if they knew it or they would be outraged. And he's like, why are you playing this for me, man? Every, everything. You, you're saying you're smarter than me. I'm like, I never said I was smarter than him. 
Never did. Never once said I was smarter than him. But after he watched a few scenes of this movie, he saw my attitude. And he's like, you're smart. You think you're smarter than me? I didn't say that. You see, I want to tell you folks something I've said in several videos. If I conquer this planet, I'm going to tell everybody on this planet how great they were. I'm going to show them everything they've ever done throughout their history. And I own this now because I conquered you. Who would fail? Which people would rise if the right information was out? Well, see, the point of the matter is all the people would rise. Everybody would rise. You see, when you conquer a people and you steal their identity and you steal their their inventions and their thoughts and everything they've ever done, you steal and you can't get out of this mode because then you're searching for more. You have the people, you have their history, but you need to know more about them. You can't learn from a creature that you've manipulated. If you break something, then you study it, you're only going to get the broken, broken workings of a broken machine. You conquer a people, you hide their identity, and then you mimic what they act like. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just mad at the people that made everybody stupid. And then people don't understand when I say that. But it, like the guy said, you think you're better than me. If everything in my so-called people's history was stolen, I'm not better than you. You're just not what you thought you were. Then that's the bottom line. It doesn't matter who made the will, as long as we can all use the will. So if something came down from the sky and showed everybody a picture and God was a female, oh my God. All these years, we thought God was a man. God was a female. Oh my God. What do we do? We can't tell women that they created all life. We're going to create a Kabbalah, a whole system based around not telling women that they are the shit. Who does this and expect to survive? And let's take it one more step backwards. If black people created all of this shit and they failed, they created everything, and they got so big and high and powerful and mighty, they failed. You steal everything from a failed culture, recreate it. It's going to fail again. So, when I look at this, I look, and I think and I laugh. Because when I did the little black study, you know, in racism that took me to the Bible, that took me to the Edomites, that took me throughout all this history and all this crap and all this reason for them hating us and us hating them. All this stuff came down to one conclusion and it came down to me and it hit me like a ton of bricks and I said to myself, these people are fucking stupid. Because when you hide the technology from the people, the people suffer. When you hide the truth from the people, the people suffer. When you tell the truth to the people after hiding the truth from the people for a long time, the people suffer until they get their shit together. But me, I'm just a bad guy. I'm just a dangerous, angry threat. And the original threat was because they believed that they would be mixed out. Because people mix. So what better way to save our race than to destroy the one that we can't mix out? A black man and a black woman can, and it has been proven, create a white baby. Two white people cannot do this. A white man and a black woman cannot do this. A black man and a white woman cannot do this. And that was one of the reasons why they were afraid of us. 
our sperm. But thanks to plastic and BPH, they don't have to worry about our sperm or their sperm because they're fucking females. We're all going to be females in 30 years because of plastic. So it doesn't matter. We'll all, you'll be a world with nothing but women on it. Because you will not be able to differentiate all these men running around here with wild testosterone thinking about dicks in their mouths. Because they show it on TV. They show it everywhere. The homification, the sexualization, the BPH and different fucking chemicals that go through our system. In other words, when you start studying all these other things, they web off into other things. They web off into other things. And it's just too much. And it's illogical. It's nonsensical. The reason for the control, they started in one direction and it ended up in another one. It may have all started with, we're worried about our sperm. But you can't teach a whole four or five generations of people that this group of people have only been in bushes and only been enslaved. You can't teach that because it's not true. But that's all we've been taught. So when I showed this guy an alternative way of thinking, all he could say was, you think you're better than me now. Then he says, all of our accomplishments, you guys are taking them for yourself. It's like reverse racism. There's no such thing as reverse racism. People remember shit and they don't let it go. So, when you take the journeys that I've taken, when I looked at why I was treated a certain way, why I looked like, why I can't go back to work, why I can't deal with people in public, because I see shit differently. And when I see it happening, I tune all the way out, and I gotta get the fuck out of there. Because it's stupid. And a friend of mine, a white friend of mine, I was pointing out to him, he says, when were you ever humiliated in public? Because I pointed out to him, remember when we first took the puppy to the damn thing, I had you and my son with me and the puppy. That lady yelled at me for 15 minutes about not having no insurance. And how dare you come in here like this and da 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 And when she found it, when she found the evidence that I did have insurance, she did not once apologize to how I was treated. And my buddy's like, I remember that. You didn't go off. I'm like, no. I should have went off. Because as a man, as an American, I demand my respect. But as an American, I also know I wouldn't want nobody walking in my house, in my yard, on my property, in my face. I wouldn't want anybody in my space. That's not going to be respectful and honest. And people can't handle that. They see a Mexican or a black guy or a, a dirty white guy. I have to say dirty white guy because there's two different white people. There's the elites and there's black elites too. There's black elites. There's Mexican elitists. There are, they're elites. We know them. We know who they are. We know who the elitists are. The black ones. We know who the white ones are, too. Black ones don't have no power, though. They got the power to go wherever they want to and do whatever they want to. They ain't got no power to change anybody's policies or anybody's mind about a damn thing. They don't. It's fake it. You got these different entities all pulling and tugging on you. You got a group of people raised to believe they're superior. You have another group of people who are superior because they money say so. And those powerful people don't give a damn about their people. And I want to say it because they're white, they are black, they are Spanish, they are from every nation on this planet, and they are the elite. They are what some people were calling the the other, the other few years ago, the 2%, but the elite is actually the top of the 2%, the 1% of the 2%, there's like a, a, a sliver on the top of them is the elite, 
the people who can say, you know what, I think we should shut down France's economy. I don't like them. Next thing you know, France's economy is shut down. These are people who are on some old biblical shit that is no, has no place in this world. But they're going to live their shit out. And we as a people, the people have got to say, when? Okay, stop. No. And evil is the most simple thing to defeat. Evil will tell you their plans. Evil will give you, look, here's our plan. We put it in a 15,000 page brochure. Here at the desk, go get you a brochure with all of our evil plans in it. And then they dare the regular people, stop them. You can't stop the evil if you're too busy about me. If you're worried about me shopping, who gave him the money? How does he get to go on vacation? You don't see evil putting its foot up your ass because you're too worried about poor people getting some. Oh, my God, he has a job. Who gave him a job? Oh, that took some white man's job. Oh, my God, look, he's a Mexican. Oh, what is he doing here? Oh, my God. See, we can't go around the world telling people how to live and then come home and then our shit is in disarray and then we say, oh, well, it's because of you people or those people. My life isn't good because of those people. There's enough blame to go around to everybody. And all the blame comes right back to us. This system was set up for you to vote shit out that ain't no good. That isn't any good. That is not good for you. You're supposed to vote for laws that affect the things around you in a negative way. You vote against those. But you have to also understand, when you vote for something that's negative for other people, it comes back to you. So when I tell people to get together and create legislature to stop people from getting shot in the back or unlawful killings by police officers, the first thing I get from those racist people is maybe we should have a law to stop welfare. Okay, create a law to stop welfare and then you'll see exactly what will happen. You didn't think white people voted. Poor white people. You didn't think poor black people voted. You didn't think poor Mexicans voted. But if you stop welfare, every poor person is going to come out the woodwork to vote. And when that happens, all you people who sit on the top of the mountains looking down at people thinking that you're one of the 12 original gods, you're going to get a rude awakening when your ass is voted out. That's how that works. We have got to stop. Because hate is created. Without that hate, they cannot divide and they cannot conquer. Without the division of people, without the, the poor people getting together, the poor white and the poor black, and the poor Mexican, the poor Asian, poor Irish and the poor Jews if they don't get together stop their little bullshit arguing stop their little <laughs> he took my job he took my job he took your job if you stop that shit if you stop it if you march in solidarity if you stop fighting in prison if you unite other than going fucking camping with 15 different agendas, something can happen. This has been 40 minutes. And I went nine minutes too long. But you've been too. And there's a message in the middle of this video. And when you can figure out what the message is, and you write it down in the comment box, the first right answer, I'll make a video just especially for you. I'll put your name on I'll talk about you in the video. Let's see if anybody got enough brains to figure it out. You've been too.